Hey guys, got my Marvel top on, so you know what we're talking about today. I think we're gonna have a problem here. Hey, I'm Just Jake, and uh, today we will be talking about the Civil War trailer that dropped uh, yesterday, just in time for Thanksgiving. Civil War. The trailer looks awesome. It's our first look, and my friends are like, "Oh my god, have you seen the um, Civil War trailer?" I was like, "No, oh my god, I have not seen it." So. First thing I did yesterday was just watch it, and then watch it again, and then rewatch it, just for good measures. But yeah, it looks awesome, and I'm super pumped for it. Definitely super pumped. But now we're getting down to business. Okay, so firstly, the tone, the tone of this film looks, or well, the trailer anyway, is quite similar to Age of Ultron. Whether they go for that um, tone throughout the whole film, like in Age of Ultron, is a different story. I'd like to think they're going to go for a darker film, because it is heroes against heroes. There's massive arguments. I'd like to think it's going to be a bit darker, there's going to be a bit more gravity to it. Because with Age of Ultron, even though it was a good film, you can't fault it, it was good, it did not hit the right mark, I don't think. It, the trailers made it look like it's going to be an all-out fight to the death, like it was, it was a desperate attempt to survive against Ultron, who in the comics is a force to be reckoned with. The trailers look like that, they, that the Avengers were at the end of their ropes, they didn't know what to do, but in the film, it wasn't as drastic as they made out unfortunately, but maybe they've learned from it and they will put up what they need in Civil War. I mean, it's the Russo brothers, they know what they're doing, they did brilliantly with Winter Soldier because that was just applauded throughout. So, fingers crossed for a slightly darker movie. The tone has got to be right. I mean, there can be jokes and stuff in there. But not every other sentence. Okay, now another thing that people are talking about is Spider Man. Where is Spider Man? Where is he? But of course, I don't think they're going to show him. I don't really want them to show him because they've worked so hard, Marvel have worked so hard to get him. And if they just flaunt him off like he's nothing then I don't think it would be as respectful to the character, but what they might do is what they did with Vision, because you didn't see Vision until the third Age of Ultron trailer, which would be awesome, get the fans pumped, they'd be like, yes, Spider-Man, look at him, he's so awesome, or just have him, like, swing by or something, or just do a really, see him in a fighting sequence or something, because you can't do the eye thing with Spider-Man, because, you know, he's Oh, but they can do just massive close up with him. Just a piece, just pulling down his mask. Just like. Things just suited up and ready to go. That, that could be possible. Marvel, you can have that. You can have that on me. But, um. Yeah, no Spider Man at the moment that we've seen. That we haven't seen, in fact. Um, another thing is. It is made to look like a very Captain America centric uh, movie because people were wondering like uh, even I was wondering like ah oh, it's kind of basically just I think just free what makes it a Captain America film but now they've shown it, it is definitely Captain America he's looking for Bucky he's continuing from Winter Soldier continuing from Ant Man after, after credits scene which if you haven't seen that all of alert I guess. America base, so that is good. His film. Although with this trailer, I kind of felt more for Tony. I'm sorry, Steve, but Iron Man. He's just doing his job, and at the moment it just looks like Cap is trying to look after his friend Bucky because he's done some bad things. But he's got his memory back. He knows who he is, and. I mean, trying to redeem him, I'm guessing, but 
the government aren't having any of it. The secure is now work within the government and Cap's not about it. But yeah, I, I'm feeling for Iron Man. Especially that last part of the trailer. Cap's like, I'm sorry, Tony, but he's my friend. But Tony and his Iron Man are just like, so was I. And then afterwards, you just see Cap and Bucky just going at it, throwing shield and just like bam, bam. And Iron Man could potentially take him, especially in his new armor. It's good. It's been rumored around that it's the uh, Bleeding Edge armor, which is the strongest of his armors in the comics. But because I'm, I'm guessing Iron Man's holding back because he is his they're friends. They are friends. And Cap has a lot more to lose in this film than Tony does, so Cap's going to be going all at it, whereas Tony just trying to just protect himself, but him and the Winter Soldier, they are just going at it for that last scene. Like, wow. That's, that's incredible. Which, this film is going to tear some friendships apart, definitely. I'm, <laughs> I'm highly forward to the inner conflict, because um, <clears throat> that's what I like about Age of Ultron the most was we saw how the Avengers interacted with each other as friends. That was more interesting than um, the other parts of the films. I liked it when they were hanging out. I liked it when they were making jokes with each other that they've all, like the inside jokes that they've already made. That was great compared to the, where the first thing was where they're just still trying to get to know each other. That's what They're on a good basis. They know each other. It's a good time. And now they've had a massive woman out. It's definitely going to change the... Um, how they react to, more to the future, but um, what else is there? We didn't see a lot of um, the other Avengers. We we saw Black Widow on the phone with Cap as well. We saw um, just saw a bit of Hawkeye. We saw Scarlet Witch. We saw Falcon a lot, which I presume we would see a lot of Falcon because he's good friends with Steve. But we barely saw any of. Steve. Iron Man's team, we only saw War Machine, if anything. We didn't see any vision, we didn't we didn't see um who else on this team. You know what, I forget. I forget. But we I don't think Ant Man is, but we didn't see Ant Man. He might have been there, you know, he might have been this small. But we did not see Ant Man either. We did not Who else did we not see? I swear I'm missing loads. But yeah, we didn't see a lot. I'm guessing for this trailer, they're making it completely making sure the conflict is known between Captain America and Iron Man. It's there. You know it. It can't be mistaken for anything else. It is there. And um, maybe for the next trailer, they will make it a bit more Captain America biased. Because for this trailer, yes, I felt more for Tony. But then maybe in the next trailer, I feel more for Cap. So it's a bit of an even out scenario because we can't have... Cap being the villain in his own movie. That's like, I mean, how wrong would that be? But, yeah, I definitely felt more Iron Man in this trailer, definitely. And we really did not see the whole agenda either. We only saw the conflict. We didn't see Baron Zemo was in this film. We didn't see, we saw a little bit of crossbones actually. We did see a little bit of crossbones. But there's a whole other agenda in this film that has been just overlooked right now, which may be present in the next trailer, so we kind of get an idea of the idea. But yeah, there's a lot more to come surely. And General Ross is back, and maybe he's something to do with it, maybe something to do with the other plot lines, because he's the one that's trying to recreate the Super Soldier Serum in the first place. With uh, Bruce Banner in the Incredible Hole. So maybe because he's now standing next to the living, breathing or Super Soldier himself, maybe he's gonna try and recreate it again, which could lead to him becoming Red Hulk. You liking this? Yeah? Because I like it. I like it a lot. That could be a really cool after credit scene that he's tried it on himself again and it did not work. Could lead to a really awesome Hulk solo film. 
because Abomination isn't dead. He's still around. He must be around somewhere. The government must be keeping hold of him because the Hulk left him there with General Ross at the end because of the Hulk. So maybe General Ross is keeping him hold, hold up somewhere. And then he becomes Red Hulk, releases him. They both go after Hulk. You never know. Uh, that could be an awesome Hulk solo film. And don't tell me it would be too expensive, because if Transformers can do it with the Transformers on the screen all the time, then you can do it with a Hulk on the screen all the time. It's not difficult, I pre I swear. I actually don't know if it's difficult, but I'm just, that's my really good comparison. If you can have a Transformer on screen all the time, you can have a Hulk on screen all the time. Just read Red Hulk, because Red Hulk is more in control than Hulk. Because I guess with Hulk, he's creating him a bit more of a mess. But with Red Hulk, he's in control, so it wouldn't be too bad to have Red Hulk on screen all the time instead. And General Ross could just lend his voice. That would be cool. But that is another video, <laughs> definitely another video. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Anyway, um, what's um, what are your um views on the Civil War trailer, and what do you think is going to come up next? Either let let me know in the comments down below, and I'll have a read of them. But yeah, I'm just Jake, and you've been great. Thanks for watching.